Hello everyone, this is Nice Guy, and welcome back to some more Pokemon Emerald version. In the last episode, we defeated Flannery of the Fire Gym in Lava Ridge after a few unsuccessful attempts, but we got her eventually. And then we met up with May, who alluded to us that she's gonna go challenge a Perilberg Gym. And before she went off, she gave us the Go Goggles so we can now enter the desert, the sandy, stormy desert in Route 111. And also we, because we defeated Flannery of the Fire Gym, we can use the HM for strength outside of battle. But we never taught it to any of our Pokemon. I mean, we could have taught it to Aron, but I kind of like Headbutt better because it had the ability to flinch, but there's no way around it now. We must use strength on one of our Pokemon. Not useful on Kyo, but Titan, however, wants to learn strength. Can only learn four moves. Let's teach his string. We're gonna get rid of headbutt because it's one, or not one, ten base power more. One, two, and poof! Titan forgot how to use headbutt, and Titan learned strength. So we're exchanging the flinch rate for the extra ten base power. And right before we go into Route 111, there is, is one place where we can use strength, and it's right here on the fiery path. You saw it on the first time we went through here, it was on the left. It's a big boulder, but Pokemon may be able to push it aside. Would you like to use strength? Titan used strength, and now we can move the boulders around like so. Now don't be pushing around boulders aimlessly, you don't want to, like, lock yourself in, not lock yourself in. Lock the path you are trying to get to, otherwise you have to revisit the area to reset the boulders. There should be two items here, one of them is right here, TM06 Toxic. One of the best moves in the entire game. Right here, poison the foe with a toxin that gradually worsens. We're gonna teach it to a Pokemon. Teach Toxic any um, any Pokemon that is capable of using or learning via TMs can learn Toxic. We're gonna give it to Skylar because she is one of the best physical walls in the game. So she can sit on most if not all physical attackers. We're gonna get rid of Sand Attack, because Sand Attack is for cheesers. Forgot Sand Attack and learn Toxic. And if we go down here, we have to push this boulder a little ways away. And where do we have to push it? Oh, we have no choice, right? Right here we have to push it. And don't push that boulder down or you'll have to revisit the area because it's a one tile gap. Oh no, not use the TM. I meant to use a repel. The second item we can get... Please, 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 please. A fire stone. I will throw on screen which Pokemon need this to evolve. I personally have no use for it, except for completing the Pokedex in the post game. And I want to be safe, let's use the item finder. Nope, no response. Oh, and because we've defeated another gym, we will have another room unlocked for the Trick Master's house. So let's go challenge it, you're being watched. Up here in the cupboard. Ha, huh, grr. How did you know I would conceal myself in this dresser? You're sharp. Oh, it's a dresser, not cupboard. I'm thinking of a kitchen. You, you've come to challenge my trick house, haven't you? That's why you're here, isn't it? Yes, it is. Consider your challenge accepted. Enter through the scroll there and let your challenge commence. I shall be waiting in the back. You should know the drill by now. I'm gonna mute my mic while I do some voiceover on any Pokemon that I may have missed to this point.
All right, we are back. We did get the hard stone from the Trick Master's house. It is a held item that boosts the power of rock moves. They can be found on Wild Aron 5% of the time and a few other methods. I forgot when, but I decided I'm going to keep the Quick Claw on Titan because it is so freaking useful. I never used it in any of my playthroughs except in like the very beginning and then I took it off for uh, usually the soft sand, but yeah, it is so useful for slow Pokemon. I have no clue why I overlooked that it's so overpowered. Anyways, let's go to the right of Lava Ridge Town. No more backtracking. We can finally go into the desert. Route 111. There are quite a few items to collect here. Um, and also a few trainers. Let's put on a repel and I'm gonna do the same thing as I did before. Let's use a super repel. Turn off my mic and introduce, introduce you to some new Pokemon here. There's a, a particularly special one here that a lot of people use in their team that will get a splash screen. Thanks to the Go Goggles we were gifted from May, we can go into the desert and gain access to Two new generation 3 Pokemon. The most common one is found 35% in the deep sand. A very popular one that I myself used in my last save, Trapinch, the Ant Pit Pokemon. It's a cute little ground type with a scary high attack of 100 for being a first stage evolution. However, it only has 10 speed and there's only one Pokemon slower than this thing and it's in the post game. It has two abilities. The first one, Hyper Cutter, preventing its attack from being lowered and arena trap preventing opposing pokemon from fleeing or switching both won't really matter because when it evolves at level 35 pretty late it will switch to one ability and levitate as vibrava it has a new dragon subtyping it can now learn the hm for fly when we get it and it immediately learns dragon breath to spread paralysis its attack is toned down with some additional speed, it takes some patience, well, a lot of patience, especially for Trap Inch. Your efforts will be rewarded when it finally evolves into Flygon. Flygon is a really good Pokemon, good stat spread. Crunch is special in this generation, which sucks a bit, and you'll need a TM for Stab Earthquake, but they're still good to have. I used a Flygon in my last save with Dig because I wanted to save the TM for a duplication glitch. Avoid Ice Beam and he'll be good with Flygon, it's a reliable Pokemon. That is not the only Pokemon in this route that I used last time though. The other one is the Grass type Cacnea. It's pretty rare in Emerald, it got nerfed from 20% in Ruby and Sapphire down to 6 in this game. Even though it's a Grass type, during Sandstorm it has two benefits thanks to its ability Sand Veil. 1. It won't take damage from Sandstorm and 2. It reduces the accuracy of attacks against it by 20%. A very dirty ability coupled with the held item Bright Powder, which reduces the accuracy of moves against it by 10%. Cacnea has really high offensive stats. It learns the move Spikes at level 33, which is a hazard move that deals 1 8th HP of damage to non-fly and non-levitate opponents when they switch. At level 32, it evolves into Cacturn and gains a dark subtype. It gets stabbed from the faint attack it learned at level 29 as a Cacnea and learns the signature move at level 41, Needle Arm. It's a 60 base power grass move that has a 30% chance of flinch. Pretty high flinch rate. In Gen 3 only, it will have 120 power if the opponent last used Minimize. I like it a lot. What I did learn about using grass types in the past is they're generally slower than water types and nearly all water types can learn the move Ice Beam, which is super effective against grass. But Cacnea didn't need any TMs to be useful and it destroyed one of the Elite Four members so I used one and even though it was frustrating to take all those Ice Beams and its slower speed, it was fun using it. Okay, all the trainers are defeated in the desert We've gotten all the items there is to find, except for one. And for this last one, 
I recommend you pick up the muck bike. It will be required if you want this last item. And in the middle of here, there should be something peculiar going on if you enter and exit the route. Okay, I had to visit Route 112 and then go back to Route 113. It can't, you can't just exit and re-enter the desert. There's a special little fading tower here. Let's check it out. <gasps> the tower is real! And we've entered Mirage Tower. It will disappear and reappear in the desert on Route 111 as you enter and leave the route. It is four stories tall and... There's something special up in the in the final floor of this Mirage Tower. The last item I alluded to. Let's turn on a repel. Turn on. Let's put on a repel. It is not a switch we have to press. It is a spray. This place is temporary. There is wild Pokemon to be found here. And it will be gone forever after you leave or after you get the item in this Mirage Tower, so if you really want to have a Pokemon that says it was caught in Mirage Tower, go ahead. It will be your only chance. Unless with glitches. Pretty sure you can make this reappear with glitches. Okay, we. this is why we need the mock Bike. We have a little rocky puzzle, or cracked floor puzzle we need to... Not a puzzle. Like an obstacle course. Oh, that's a dead end. That's just a shortcut to the bottom, I'm pretty sure. Oh, and we also need Rock Smash. Totally forgot to mention that, but your, your HM Slave should be on you. Because only very few people have a full team of six up to this point. There's still a lot of good Pokemon to add to your team. This rock appears to be breakable. Would you like to use Rock Smash? And now you must be thinking, wait a minute, I thought you said there was one item to get in this Mirage Tower, not two. Well, you found the root fossil. If this fossil is taken, the ground around it will likely crumble away. Take the root fossil. We're just checking it out. We left the root fossil alone. And to the right is a claw fossil. Now, depending on which fossil... Fossil. Depending on which fossil you claim, the other one will disappear temporarily. It won't be gone forever, but it will be locked away into the post game. In my opinion, the right fossil here on the right, the claw one, is much, 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 much better for you and your adventure. So I'm gonna go take it. The left one is okay, but I'll just go over the Pokemon. Once we're... Once we... Revive these fossils because if you remember that scientist in the Devon Corp back at Rustboro, he said he was working on. <gasps> uh oh. No, I didn't finish explaining it. And now the Mirage Tower is gone and the root fossil disappeared into the sand. Wow, that must be some pretty dangerous quicksand, but we're walking just fine over it. As I was saying, that scientist back at Rustboro in the Devon Corp, he told us in the beginning of our adventure that he was working on a device to revive fossil Pokemon, and that it was working. Why don't we go pay him a visit? Man, it's tedious to bike back and forth. But we are here at the Devon Corp. And let's go to the second floor, I believe. Yeah, it was right here. I've been trying to develop a device that resurrects Pokemon from fossils. And it's working. <gasps> Wait, that thing you have there. Is that a Pokemon fossil? Would you like to bring that Pokemon back to life? I can with my newly developed fossil regenerator. Press yes. Excellent, let's do this right away. She's in hand over the claw fossil to the Devon researcher. And if you try to talk to him, he will say... It has one drawback. It takes a long time to work. So, uh... How about you go on for a stroll and look around for a while? 
Okay, let's take on a stroll. Alright, we're done. How's the claw fossil going? Thanks for waiting. Your fossil life Pokemon has been brought back to life. The fossil was an ancient Pokemon. Anorith it was. And we received Anorith. Do you want to give a nickname to this Anorith? No, we're not going to use it on our team. It was transferred to Lanet's PC. It was placed in box 1. We chose the claw fossil so we got the Pokemon Anorith. Is a rock and bug type. And it has a very, very good ability, Battle Armor. It prevents all critical hits. Also, Rock and Bug are pretty complementary defensive typing. It is only weak to Rock, Steel, and Water. Granted, we're going to be facing a lot of Water Pokemon soon, but that is a very good defensive profile. It only resists normal and poison, and it is neutral to everything else, but like I said, it cannot take any critical hits. When it evolves, it evolves into Armaldo, the plate Pokemon, at level 40, so fairly late into the game. But your efforts will be rewarded. It has an insane 125 attack, and pretty beefy physical defense at 100. It's slow, but it doesn't take crits. It has a decent move pull, however, you're gonna have to crutch on TMs. The only good physical move it learns at level 37 is Ancient Power, and it's only 5 power points. Other than that, it gets Iron Tail, Earthquake, Dig, Brick Break, Rock Tomb, Aerialize, and Facade. And if you really want to, you can give it the HM for Strength as well. In ancient times, Armaldo lived on land by the water's edge and dived into the ocean to hunt for prey. The large wings on its back were used for swimming, while its thick shell protected it from enemy attacks. If you chose the root fossil, the Devon researcher would revive your fossil into Lilip. A rock and grass type, very unique typing, even more though than rock and bug. It has the ability suction cups which prevent this Pokemon from being swapped out due to a roar, circle throw, and other moves that will normally switch you out. It evolves at level 40 into Cradley, the barnacled Pokemon. Its rock and grass typing, like Armaldo, complements it very well. It has such awkward weaknesses to remember. It is weak to fighting, bug, steel, and ice. So your best option against this thing is gonna be fighting moves. If you come across it, which, hint hint, we will in a very important boss battle. I did try to use this thing in a playthrough a while back. However, its offensive move pull is pretty crappy. I mean, Ancient Power and Giga Drain aren't bad. But other than that, it can learn Earthquake, which you would really want to throw Earthquake on another Pokemon. You're going to be relying on Toxic Stalling for a lot of feints when you're using this Pokemon. And it slows down the gameplay a little bit too much for my liking back when I used it. So for that reason, I recommend Armaldo for your fossil. Cradley's heavy body acts as an anchor, preventing it from getting washed away by rough ocean currents. In ancient times, it built its nest on the shallows of warm seas. When the tide went out, it came up on land to search for prey. So yeah, those are the two fossil Pokemon. I really like them both. I thought they were both super interesting, but if I'm being completely transparent and honest, Armaldo is really good and usable and Cradley is just not. Unfortunately, I mean, it's a lot better for... Um, the Battle Frontier, but not much else than that. Not for a playthrough at all. Oh, and where am I going? We're supposed to be going back to Petalburg. We have four Jim and May said she was gonna battle our dad, so that is hint for us to go challenge him because there's literally nowhere else for us to go. Which I hope our dad will let us accept our challenge because if he doesn't then we'll be stuck forever here in the mainland of Hoenn. We can't challenge the Pokemon League and our Pokemon journey will come to an end. Here we go, back at Petalburg City. 
Good, our Pokemon are healed up. Petalborg City Pokemon Gym. Leader Norman. A man in pursuit of power. I think I'm gonna break off the episode here. It might have been short, but I want to save it for the next episode. Thank you all for watching. Next time you see me, we're gonna be taking on our dad Norman of the Petalburg Gym. Hopefully, we actually don't know for sure. You better say yes or we're dead end when it comes to the progression. See you all next time when we go do that.